Hi, my name is Chris Gates and I'm the founder and CEO of Mainsprings. Hi, my name is Sophie Oppenheimer and I'm the co-director of the Reed Jules Oppenheimer Foundation and the Valley Foundation. So a few months ago, we had this idea that, you know, the impact that we were having as an organization and as partners was limited to our campuses and what we could do in our own communities. And we really wanted to take the principles and practices of permaculture and have a much larger impact. One of the biggest things that we've learned as an organization at Mainsprings is that permaculture, as we've grown to observe and learn it more and more, has really become the thread that ties all of our programs together. Without the success of our permaculture farms and without the success of the educational programs, and more importantly, the way of thinking behind permaculture, our other programs from the, the school to the clinic to our girls' home wouldn't be nearly as successful as they are today. Hello, my name's Mark Shepard. I'm a terrestrial ecologist, a farmer, and a permaculture designer. Uh, I'm here today at the Katongo campus of Main Springs in uh, Tanzania. And I'm sitting at a site where I first started working 10 years ago with the organization. Uh, when I first got here, this was mostly flat sand, uh, some scraggly weeds growing on it and there was no food being produced for anyone and this was the site of a growing uh, girls home and school. We began by redesigning the site by capturing water, spreading it around, then we began a very complex agroforestry system using food trees in rows with a wide space for growing regular produce crops between those rows of trees. It may look like a disorderly mess to some people, However, the productivity of a system like this uh, far exceeds what you can get out of a simple field of maize. This could have been used to, be, to grow corn with chemical pesticides and fertilizers. A system like this now makes its own fertilizer, it makes its own pest control, it has habitat for wildlife, it produces animal feed, human feed, and nutrition, and a healthy diet all throughout the whole season. Permaculture sometimes has three ethics, and it's really wonderful about these three ethics. Every permaculturist agrees on the first two. First is planet care. Second one is people care. If we don't take care of the planet, it can't take care of us. If we don't care, take care of people, they're going to be sick, unhealthy, and violent, malnourished, etc. So we have to take care of the planet if we're going to take care of people. Well, how do we do that? We need to generate some sort of income somehow. So here, we, we generate a profit through the use of all of the perennial products produced on the farm. That's a lot of peas. I'm here co-teaching a permaculture design course. What I really like about this is we are leveraging uh, our impact. Instead of just training one person who's going to do it on their property, we're training 10 different organizations to now go do it on their campuses and then they can train 10 more organizations. So the multiplier effect of any support for Mainsprings goes way beyond the boundaries of this property here. For me, over the years, working um, with Mainsprings and other organizations to install permaculture farms on their land and integrate it into their organizations, uh, we realize that there's a lot of organizations that need and want this type of support and, and to transition the way they're producing food for their communities. And yet they didn't have the resources to access the training um, or to implement the, the beginnings of permaculture plot on their land. And so Chris and I had started talking. I'd met a lot of organizations that were interested um, and we wanted to find a way to help organizations start that process. And we really had a great turnout for our first year. As we mentioned, it's a, it's a pilot project, um, pilot grant period for the first year, and we had 32 organizations apply. It was a very tough competitive um, selection process. I think the meeting took us seven hours to decide. So we ended up accepting 10 organizations into the grant. And I think it's incredible because the diversity of organizations represented here from five different countries all across East Africa um, is truly incredible. And we're going to be able to impact children, people with disabilities, mothers, uh, hospitals, health systems. And, you know, all of that combined will really help to improve the entire health of a country.